let me start with a story. Um, probably not true. And it's about a, a finance professor at Harbour Business School. And this is the top guy, the most experienced professor of finance. And uh, he was giving this uh, very rare lecture. So hundreds of students were there in the lecture hall, anticipating his words of wisdom, his, uh, the, the combined uh, experience of everything he's gone through in business, everything he knows about finance. They're all there listening. He comes to the lectern, it's a hushed uh, hall. And then he delivers his lecture in five words and then walks off. And those five words were, don't run out of cash. And I think it's so true. It's so pertinent that actually of all the stuff we deal with in business, all the accounts and budgets and balance sheets, to run out of cash is what makes most business businesses go bust. You can be profitable, but if you don't have the cash. Now we know that, um, but it's highlighted right now because I know many businesses I'm dealing with are really, really worried and losing sleep about running out of cash. So that's why I'm gonna talk about cash flow today and give you some actual tools to get your head around it, to use so that you can, first of all, minimize stress, and secondly, actually deal with your situation as a business. And I know that um, many businesses that I deal with in the creative and digital industries uh, in Liverpool, nationally and worldwide, often have worries about cash flow. It's often why they call me in, uh, even in good times. So I'm familiar with cash flow from their experience and from my own experience of uh, running and setting up businesses over many years. Now, some of you will say, well, actually, we've already got a, a cash flow spreadsheet. You know, we know how to do that. Um, and of course, many businesses will have sophisticated spreadsheets. They'll be able to get a grip on their cash flow planning. They'll be able to forecast ahead. They'll be able to see. And that's great. But what I find, uh, again, from my experience of dealing with uh, small businesses in the creative industries, is that some of them simply don't have such a spreadsheet. Others have it have one that they got somewhere but don't use it or they've sort of cobbled something together themselves which kind of works but it's not really very satisfactory. So I want to share with you um, a spreadsheet I've developed for myself. I use it pretty much every day uh, especially at these times and I've used it and uh, on my training workshops and shared it with people. So it's a particular spreadsheet. I'm going to quickly run through it. Um, but crucially, uh, answer a few questions that I've been asked over the years about cash flow planning so that they, they become sort of tips and tricks in how to use it, even if you already have a spreadsheet. So let me see if uh, I can do the technical stuff and share my screen and bring up uh, uh, let's see. I did practice this yesterday. Yeah, okay. Right, so can you see my screen right now? Can somebody give me a thumbs up if you can see the a spreadsheet screen? Right, okay. So um, again, this is not sophisticated. If you're familiar with Excel, you can set it up. This is not rocket science but it's just, um, just a quick overview of uh, a simple spreadsheet that works, that gives you the information you need and allows you to project into the future. So here uh, across the top, we've got months starting with April 20. Um, start with an opening balance here with your bank balance at the beginning of April. And then down the left here, we've got receipts from different categories. Now, that could be different clients, uh, different products, different projects, the various ways that money comes in, the, the lines of receipts. And then lower down the various payments that you have to make right down, um, down there. This gives you a, a total, it summarizes the receipts, it summarizes the payments, shows you the net receipts and a closing balance, which then goes to the top of the next month 
etc. And this is just a blank template, pretty blank, just the numbers are there to show you. Better is to show you an example. This is fictional, this is, don't take the numbers too seriously, but you can see here, the business has got fees from clients one, two, and three, sales of products, grants, uh, loans, refunds, and there'll be other categories that you can add. And then down in payments, freelance workers, uh, materials, delivery costs, salaries, travel and subsistence, all the usual stuff, and you will put your own categories in there. And they've plotted the numbers ahead. This is where they say, well, we know that we're gonna get fees from client one, 4,000 pounds in May, 4,000 June, etc., until September, but then that stops. So they're putting information in, in that way. And as they do, and they can change this, what if this client here, uh, doesn't pay? What if this client goes bust and we don't get any money? So all these £6,000 just disappear. Well, we can then see the effect that uh, looking at the bottom line, that here, um, which is in November, we're in negative. We've run out of money. But the beauty is that by looking ahead, we can spot that many months in advance and therefore we can say well we either need to get new clients and increase put some numbers in these receipts here at the top or we need to reduce our costs and we can see our costs and we might say that we have to um, cancel the work of freelance workers immediately getting rid of those sorry freelance workers but that's how it goes and then that does change things a bit. And there'll be other things we can change. Uh, we can delete things or delay things so that we can see in effect the, um, what's happening along here when we might run out of cash. Now, one of the questions people ask me is, well, I've got a spread flow, uh, spreadsheet for cash flow, but how do I know what's going to happen in the future? I can't really use it. It's not a crystal ball. And my answer is, we have to put in our best estimates. We have to use whatever information we have about the future. So some of the costs, for example, are very predictable because we pay our insurance monthly, our wages and salaries and rent monthly. So, you know, they, they are knowable, but there may be other costs in the future that are not so clear. Uh, for a new project and we just have to put our best guess in there and similarly when we come to the top here looking at income from clients we can some of it we will know because we've got contracts and commitments from clients we've got regular uh, projects or sales income that we can predict and put in fairly confidently and then there might be other things that we can speculate about and that's the key really Cash flow projection isn't magic. It isn't looking into a crystal ball or somebody telling you the future. It's about speculating about the future. It's about developing what you might call what if scenarios. What if we, uh, we employed more people? What would be the effect on cash flow? Well, we would certainly have to get more income to cover that. What would be the effect of reducing our rent, moving to a smaller office or studio. Let's see what happens to cash flow. And we can use this spreadsheet um, to just explore different options to see what's going on. So let me come back. Uh, let me come back to you seeing me and me seeing whether there are any questions are coming in. Um, and you can answer questions, you can ask questions right now or I'm prepared to stay online a bit longer, or you can contact me directly afterwards to ask any questions. So cash flow planning is about having a tool, such as a simple spreadsheet that works, that summarizes all the business with all the relevant categories, that you can put in information as and when it becomes available. Now, a lot of accounts, you just do every quarter, you do it at the year end with your accountant, it's backward looking. This is actually forward looking. This is looking, you're driving the car and you're looking through 
the, the windscreen and you're spotting things in real time. And similarly, a cash flow should be updated even daily. As soon as you get some information that a client is going to pay late, amend your cash flow. As soon as you get information that sales have gone up or are likely to go up, amend your cash flow. If you get a new contract for work that's going to give you money, put it into the cash flow. So it's constantly updated and we can constantly speculate, check what would happen. And for me, it's about just peace of mind because sometimes something bad happens, you lose a contract or sales go down and you just worry and lose sleep that, oh, it's disaster, I'm gonna run out of money. But here with a spreadsheet, we can actually see, well, what would be the effect? Maybe we'll run out of money by November but I can sleep tonight and tomorrow I'm going to figure out how to deal with it. So by setting things out uh, in a logical way, using the best information we have, then actually we can, um, you know, we can get peace of mind. We can be calm, we can plan and we can do logical things instead of uh, panicking. So it is about updating it. I'm just glancing at my notes for a few more top tips. Um, yeah, and at the end of each month, you check that uh, your cash flow forecast tallies with your, your bank statement. And at that point, you might realize, oh, yeah, I forgot about the a direct debit that comes out of the bank, such as bank charges. So then you can put those, you can amend your spreadsheet, develop it. It's a living document. You're adding things, new categories come online, old categories go offline, and you can amend it as you go along. Um, <clears throat> And similarly, this is about cash, and there's a big difference between cash and income. If I issue an invoice for £1,000 plus 20% VAT, really I'm only earning £1,000. And in my profit and loss account, I would say, you know, that's income of £1,000. Because the 20% VAT, the extra £200 I charge and get, isn't really mine ultimately. So it doesn't go in the profit and loss accounts. It's not regarded as income. Nevertheless, it is still a receipt. We are receiving 1,200 pounds, and that goes into the cash flow, therefore. And the cash flow will also show that when I do my VAT um, returns at the end of the quarter, I will have to pay that 200 pounds to the uh, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. So there's a distinction, an important distinction between receipts and income. The word income, uh, is, has got a special meaning in uh, accounting terms, which is about how profitable you are, how much you're really earning. But here we we're talking about immediate cash. And so um, it is a receipt. And then it's a payment when we pay that VAT to the tax people. So they're just a few things. There are plenty of notes in the spreadsheet that I'm sharing. Uh, I should have said earlier, but I, I, it's the spreadsheet I've got and I just showed you is available online on my website. You can download it free of charge, you can use it. There's a template, an example, an unlocked sheet that you can play around with even further, and then lots of notes. So please uh, go to my website. Um, the actual page will be flashed up. I'm sure Alison has sent that already. And um, yeah, have a go, see if you like it, see if it's better than the one you have. It might be your first spreadsheet, it might be an additional spreadsheet. Use it, uh, make use of it. Get back to me with any questions. If there's any glitches in the sheet, let me know. But uh, get back to me with any questions and I'm happy to speak with, certainly with Baltic Creative Tenants um, at any time and indeed further afield. If businesses want to get in touch with me, I'm available to help.